Just one week until Pop to Victory, ladies and gentlemen. Millennia brings to you its go home edition for the biggest event leading up to the Grand Slam. Tonight, you are Millennium 18. I'm Bradley James, your ACO commentator, as always, ladies and gentlemen, as we bring to you this stack card for the go home edition of ACO Millennium. Squall Leonhardt taking on Kaji Tatsubi. Sasuke Hiryu taking on Asuka. And in the main event, Nekamaru Nidai versus Jotaro Kujo. It's all going down tonight on Millennium. But speaking of which, ladies and gentlemen, here comes one of the big favorites to win the Pop the Victory Bash for the Millennium side of things to start off the night. Squall Leonhardt, who has definitely had one up and down season as of late, ladies and gentlemen is hoping to step into the rings at Pop to Victory, into the Pop to Victory match, and walk out the number one contender for the Millennium Championship. But not only is this, but not only is this a one-on-one -on -one contest between him and one half of the tag team champions, Taji Tatsubi, but he will, but this will also be a Pop to Victory advancement match. So depending on what happens in this match, we could be seeing either of these men go up the rankings or go down the rankings. But speaking of which, Kanji Tatsumi and Jotaro Kujo, both members of Juvenile Delinquency, are going to have one exciting night ahead of them, as they will not only be defending the Millennium Tag Team Championships against Santa Papyrus, the Bone Bros, at the event, but they will also be taking apart, they will also be more two of the many participants, one of the many potential participants in the Path to Victory contest. So they could realistically both defend the tag team titles and one of them could realistically become a number one contender for the Millennium Championship and face off against the champion at the Grand Slam and Anaheim, California in December. But realistically, ladies and gentlemen, this advancement match could be huge for either of these men. It starts right now. Both men getting it on the middle of the ring of that car over tie-up. Kanji sending Squall right into the corner, trying to apply pressure and sending it right to that corner. And Kanji letting go of it. Squall not thinking any light of it, but Squall immediately go for that suplex. Squall knowing damn well what he's going to have to bring to the rings both tonight and at Path to Victory. Because as I've said before, he has definitely had quite the up and down season. Quite the up and down career since he first came into ACL back. Back at the very first event, Squall has definitely been one of those men in... Oh God, close line right to the outside. But as I was saying, Squall has definitely been one of those people here at ACL who has definitely been on the back burner as it seems. But at Path to Victory, both tonight and at Path to Victory, despite everything that has happened this season thus far, he is looking to make the statement clear that he is not going down without a fight. Because he has been close. He was close back at Danger Zone when he faced off against Nekamaru Nidai. But Nakamura Nidai has just been on this monstrous run since becoming Millennium Champion. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's only... And, again, Nakamura Nidai's reign could realistically end. It could realistically end at Path to Victory when he and, Squaw he and Rock Howard do battle for the Millennium Championship at that event. So it could be Squall... It could be Nakamura Nidai or it could be Rock Howard. 
Evil one of these men could realistically become Millennium Champion and walk into the Grand Slam with the belt. But of course, ladies and gentlemen, that will be decided back at this will be the side of part of victory. As we now focus putting attention back to this match, ladies and gentlemen, Squall has been dominant in this contest thus far. Kaji Kaji has definitely been showcasing quite the array of talent as of late, and he has definitely been showing his worth both as a tag team partner and in singles action. And you gotta remember, ladies and gentlemen, it was back at Pop to Vic it was back at Maximum Impact last year that 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 Kanji Tetsubi won the crossover championship and walked in to that event with the belt. What? And he went into the Grand Slam with that belt. So realistically, what's to say that Lightning won't strike twice for Kanji Tetsubi and he'll both walk into Pop to Victory with the tag team titles and walk out with the tag team titles. And he could walk into his second ever Grand Slam with a belt under his with a belt under his belt. There's no other way to say it, but that could realistically happen for Kaji Tetsubi this year. He and Jotaro could walk into their second ever Grand Slams with belts. And of course, turning our attention back to the match now, Kanji, who had the advantage for quite a while, is now being absolutely pummeled by Squall Leonhardt, being absolutely pummeled. Oh, God! Spear from out of nowhere right there by Squall Leonhardt, ladies and gentlemen. Kanji rebounding off the ropes and Squall taking full advantage of that by spearing the living daylights out of him. One, two, and it's only a two count. But you know for a damn fact that Squall was... Squall knew for a damn fact that he was going to take the ever-living daylights out of Kaji with that move. And now he's Irish whipping him right to the ropes now, man. Wait a minute, no Kaji. Kaji's trying to fight back now. And again, that brawler style, that brawler style of Kaji coming out in full force, setting him up. Straight jacket DDT. Straight jacket DDT connecting in full force right there by Kaji Tatsubi. You know for a damn fact Kaji's eye down at Squall. You know for a damn fact that he wants to put Squall down. He wants to him down and put an advance. But wait a minute. Kaji might be in trouble here. Kaji might be in trouble here. Squall placing him up high. God blade! God blade connects one! Two! No! Kaji kicks out! Kaji managing to survive both a spear and a gun blade all in one. But god damn, ladies and gentlemen, Kaji is not. Kaji doesn't seem to be playing around now, ladies and gentlemen. Setting scroll up now. Thunderclap connects! Thunderclap connects from out of nowhere! One! Two! No! Squall kicks out! Both men have kicked out both their signatures and their finishes at this point, so it's realistically anyone's ball game at this point. And this is that resiliency. This is that technical ability. This is that ability that they're both going to have to bring, not only to just to the Path to Victory match, but not just to their individual matches, but to pretty much everything leading up to the Grand Slam. Because it's only going to get even more intense from here on, ladies and gentlemen. After Path to Victory, things are just going to get absolutely intense here at ACL, because we will be officially on the verge of the Grand Slam. And starting from when that event happens in, in a few, in just one week's time, it's going to be absolute pandemonium. Because Path to Victory will basically confirm who will walk into, into the Grand Slam with the, with the respective belts. So we could realistically decide who will, be, who will be walking in with the belt at the Grand Slam. And again, Kanji trying to, no wait, no Squall. Squall reversing it now. Now Squall trying to eye down the advantage on Kaji at this point. Eyeing him down in the corner. I think he's ready to give him another one. Here it comes. No! Kaji reversing the spiritual DDT. And now one, two, no! Two count again. Two count again right there by Kaji Tatsumi. But I don't think Kaji's done yet. He's going to go for that bullplex collecting, sending Squall onto his back. 
But I think Kaji's going to deliver the final blow to Squall here tonight. He's going to go for it for a second time tonight. No, Squall reverses out of it. Now Squall, no way, no way to make Kaji pick it up. Squall now. Oh my god, detonation kick right there by Kaji right out of nowhere. And now, working on the body once again with those kicks. And Kaji, cannonball from the middle rope now. Going for the pin again. One, two, only a two count again. Kanji knowing damn well he has to wear down Squall. He has to wear down the Lionheart of ACL at this point. Because he's been through quite a lot already and he refuses to quit. But Kanji, Kanji trying to wear him down with that baseball slide kick. But Squall seizes the opportunity. Getting right back into the ring now. Wait a minute, Squall catching Kanji as he gets back in. Setting him up for a second time. No! Reversing the gunblade and a Frankensteiner! Frankensteiner Hurricane Rana right there by Kanji. And now, shades of his former nemesis, Kenshin Hamura. With those kicks bloodying up the skull. And wait a minute. Oh, God! Another knee right to the face. That knee smash right to the face. And now Kanji dragging Squall away again. Gonna go for the full flex one more time. Connecting. Laying Squall right on his back. Going for the pin again. One. Two. No. Squall still kicks out. Squall still kicks out. And now, Squall, Kanji might be in trouble. Kanji might be looking to wear Squall down. He might be looking to finish him off right here, right now. And now with those kicks right to the head. Oh, God, and I need to already bloody up body of Squall, Leon Hart. Now, Squall might be in trouble here. He might be in trouble at this point. Here we go. He's going to set him up one more time. From the clap connects. And that could be it for Squall. That could be it for Squall Leon Hart tonight. But will that be enough to put him down? One, two, three. And Kaji Tatsumi not only walks in two weeks in a row with the win, but he walks into Path to Victory for the for Juvenile Delinquency, both for the Path to Victory match and for the Tag Team title match. Walking in with huge momentum, his Tag Team partner will be a part of the main event tonight. So we're all yet about our time to see if he, he keeps the momentum going, if Joro can keep the momentum going for Juvenile Delinquency going into that match. But my god, what an opening contest we've seen here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. What an opening contest we have seen! And that's only the first match of this Go Home show tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Lord only knows what we're going to see later on tonight. Makaji walks into Path to Victory with double the momentum. Double the momentum going into that huge night. And you know he has to be feeling good for both himself and juvenile delinquency.
We are back here on Millennium, ladies and gentlemen, as we get set for our second match of the night. As the woman who will be defending the Lioness Championship against the Dragon of Inaba next week, Satsuki Kiryuin will face off against a former Lioness Champion at her own right in Shie Sadanaka tonight. Sasuke Kiryuin. Sasuke Kiryuin has definitely had quite the interesting couple months here on ACO and in the world of virtual wrestling as of late. She won the Lioness Championship back at Danger Zone three months ago. And then following on from that, she went on to go on this huge tirade at the third anniversary show and revealed herself to be the person that attacked Akira Yukimura and nearly shelved her entire career in one fell swoop back at Revelations 3 over at DCA. She then faced off against everyone along the way for the Lioness Championship, defending that belt. And not only that, but she also faced off against Akira Yukimura back at the DCA ACL Heroes Paradise Super Show in a losing effort in Dragon Sanctuary. And now, as of late, she seems to have been haunted by one of her past victims. Lord only knows what that's gonna do for her path to victory. But here comes the Futamaki Ninja, the successor of Hanzo, Asuka. It's definitely been quite the interesting few months for Asuka, quite the interesting season as it were. Asuka, who last season was a Lioness champion for a fair amount of, for a fair amount of time, retaining the belt for the second longest period of time, just under the previous champion, Red Over Yugu, has as of recently been. Oh, come on! Come on, Sasuke! Come on, god damn it, Sasuke! I was gonna go on and say about how Asuka, despite her losing streak as of late, despite her losing efforts as of late, has definitely been quite the name to still look out for. But of course, Satsuki Kiryu does not care about that. She knows for a damn fact that she has to make a damn good statement going into next week. Because she has to... She's been going absolutely nuts ever since she lost against a Kiryu Kimura back at Heroes Paradise. And ever since... And ever since the following night at Maximum Impact, when she... When after she beat Shio Zurazaki, who, who, mind you, we still have not been able to find ever since that night. Ever since she disappeared that night, we've not been able to find Shio Surazaki after that night. And ever since then, Sasuke Kiryu has just gotten more crazier than usual. She's gotten more crazier, she's gotten more unhinged than usual. She's been assaulting members of the Lioness roster left, right, and center. And it all started when Shie Saranaka became the number one contender. She assaulted her following her match, and then she assaulted... She then assaulted and viciously beat down Yukiko Amagi last week. And now tonight, she's looking to do the exact same thing to Asuka going into Path to Victory. And look at Sasuke, she's just absolutely loving this. Asuka, meanwhile, is just trying to make a brilliant... Asuka! Asuka, I forgot to mention. Asuka, I forgot to mention, pulled out one hell of an amazing match at Heroes Paradise when she tried to face off for the Rising Star title on DCA's turf for the DCA Rising Star title back at the Heroes Paradise show against Jade Storm. Now that match was a personal highlight for me, because not because I was there and I got to see it live, but it was also because of the pure athleticism that proved that Asuka still has what it takes to go in the ring at peak performance. So Lord only knows what that's gonna do for S Lord only knows what that's gonna do for Asuka's career. But again, going back to this match, unfortunately, we're not seeing that, that same ability that we saw in Heroes Paradise in both of these women. The same performance that we saw for both women at Path to Victory is not coming to fruition here tonight. Asuka very much not, unfortunately bringing her A-game as it were, while Satsuki is definitely showing the more vicious side that we've been seeing as of late. And Asuka trying to wear her down bit by bit, but Satsuki not, but Satsuki not allowing that. Satsuki Kiryu are just absolutely loving this, relishing in this moment, 
but I think she may be relishing for too long because Asuka is definitely taking advantage at this point. And now, looking to try and go for that comeback, but Sasuke not allowing it. Sasuke not allowing it one bit. But Asuka, no wait, no! Sasuke not allowing it again. Not even giving Asuka an inch of this match. Not even giving her a damn inch of space. And stomping away onto the Futamaki Ninja at this point. Picking her up slowly now. And wait a bit, Irish whip. Wait a minute. Eyeing her down again and sending her up to the top. This is... Oh, God, no. Oh, God, the avalanche. Queen's order avalanche for the top of the rope. And I'm going for that pin now. One. Two. No. Asuka kicking out. Asuka kicking out. And Satsuki, you know for a damn fact, Satsuki has to be just living at the fact that Asuka is still not down. I mean, you can... I mean, we've seen throughout the entirety of Asuka's career, you can keep her down, you can knock her... You can keep on knocking her down and down again, but she will just keep on getting back up. And Satsuki is just having to lure that the hard way as she's just thrashing her in that corner. But now Asuka is trying to fight back here. Spearing her, giving her a taste of her own medicine, but wait a minute, going up top here. Asuka, what the hell has she got in store? Wait a minute, no! Satsuki not allowing that, and a splash for good measure! And now Satsuki dragging Asuka to the middle of the ring now. Eyeing her down, and oh god! Elbow right there to, right there to Asuka. And now wearing her down at the head with that cross face. Wearing her down at the head with that cross face. Not even trying to really tap her out at this point. It's more just trying to inflict as much pain and damage onto Asuka as possible. But Asuka luckily breaks out. But Asuka picking up Satsuki. Looking for the stun gun onto the ropes. Stun gun connects. But now Asuka definitely has to take advantage at this point. She has to take advantage and wait a minute. Gonna go for that exploder suplex into that corner. And now looking to take the advantage of the top of the rope. Could this be it for Satsuki? Oh! Secret Ninja Art Moon Stop! That has to be it for Satsuki! One! Two! No! Damn it! No! Satsuki kicks out! Satsuki kicks out! Now, no! Elber from the top does not connect again! Damn it! And now Satsuki, gonna go for it this time, grounded! Queen's order! Head! Head first onto the damn, onto the damn massive, wait a minute, no! And damn it, no! And wait a minute, what? Trip and fall onto the mat! And now Satsuki, she... Asuka Bash reversed the rules of life before, but now I don't think she's going to be able to do it for a second time. She breaks it out, and Sasuke falling and stalking Asuka like a goddamn, like a goddamn animal on the prowl. She's just absolutely looking to absolutely demolish the Futamaki Ninja tonight. I mean, she wants to make the message clear. She wants to make the message clear to Chie Saranaka that no matter what she does, she will not be walking out with the bells at Path to Victory. And the disgusting display that we're seeing in the middle of the ring tonight, the absolutely disgusting display on the part of Sasuke Kiryuin, that just says it all, really. And that's Sasuke just staring down. And wait a minute, no. Oh God, for a third time, for a third time, Queen's Order for the third time. For the third time in this damn match, Queen's Order has been made. And wait a minute, here we go. She got out of it before, she managed to reverse it, but I don't think she's going to be able to get out of it. Rules of Life has been applied, and Asuka may be in deep trouble at this point, being choked the hell out by a Sasuke Kiryuin. Being choked by Sasuke at this point. 
being absolutely choked by our Lioness champion. And letting her go just like that, almost as if on purpose. And looking to wear her down again with that cross face. Looking to wear her down at the head. Sasuke just looking to wear Asuka down right at the head. Asuka has to make some kind of effort to try and survive as much as she possibly can at this point. She has to try and survive, but wait a minute. No, Sasuke reverses it. She reverses the... She reverses that. But no. And there we go. One, two, three. No! Asuka kicks out. Asuka manages to kick out. And now picking her up now. Oh! God, a stiff clothesline. Stiff as fuck. Clothesline connecting there. And another goddamn stiff clothesline connecting. God, what is it going to take to keep her down? Asuka, for the love of God. For the love of God, Asuka. Just stay down at this point. What more do you have left to give at this point? Christ! Sasuke, for the love of God, you've killed her already. You've done enough, Sasuke. Come on! But it's... God damn it, it's not enough. It's not enough for Sasuke Kiryu, and she could have had this one. She could have realistically had this one by now, but no. But no, she just decides, oh, I'm going to take my time with Asuka. I'm going to absolutely destroy her. Just like I destroyed everyone else before her. You go ahead and tell me that's not what's going through the head of Sasuke Kiryu at this point. I mean, what else can you realistically say? What else can you realistically say? And Jesus Christ! Jesus fucking Christ! You need. And now Sasuke picking up Asuka now. And now for the third time, going for it for a third time. And rules of life being applied once more. Asuka has nowhere to turn. She has nothing else left to give. And she taps as a result. And Sasuke Kiryuin walks in to pop the victory with a message made, a clear cut message made that nobody is safe anymore. And that at pop the victory, Chie Salanaka will be absolutely destroyed at the hands of Sasuke Kiryuin. That's the message we all got tonight. Sasuke Kiryuin, you absolute monster, you absolute heartless witch! If you haven't subscribed to the Video Game Wrestling Network yet, here's what you've been missing.
Video Game Wrestling Network, the only network for you. The most awesome experience network in CAW today. And we're, oh. we're back here, Millennium, ladies and gentlemen. And Chie Sanadaka, after seeing that vicious assault that Sasuke Kiryu pulled off on Oscar tonight, that in that match we just saw, she's just looking to gain. It looks like a brawl's just breaking out between these two women going into that match. Uh, Popped a victory next week. Uh, and Chie Sanadaka seems to have just had enough of the attitude that our Lioness champion has been giving as of late. It looks like she's gonna. Ch but it looks like these two are just going at it backstage. But for what's worth, I think Chie Sananaka is just trying her best to make a statement clear to the Lioness Champion. But I don't think Satsuki is basically go. But I don't think Satsuki is taking it lightly, ladies and gentlemen. She's absolutely assaulting Chie Sananaka, and she's giving her. But wait a minute. She ain't trying to fight back as much as she possibly can at this point. Trying to fight back as much as she possibly can. And wait a minute. Yes, with that side kick. Will she be able to hit Galactic Punch? Will she be able to hit that Galactic Punch? Galactic Punch hit. And a message made absolutely clear to our Lioness Champion. The message made absolutely clear to our Lioness Champion with this assault backstage. That next week she's coming to take the belt off the queen. But for how long will this be able to go on? How long will Chie be able to go on with this? Considering everything that is happening thus far, and Satsuki's just viciously assaulting her. But what the hell is going to happen next week, ladies and gentlemen, when those two go at it? And as I said, ladies and gentlemen, it's now time for the main event of the evening. As one half of the current Millennium Tag Team Champions, Jorro Kujo, will take on the current Millennium Champion, who will go in to face off against Rock Howard next week in Nakamura Nidai. In a sense, it's technically champion versus champion. And hey, hey, wait a minute! Wait a goddamn minute! That's Nakamura Nidai! And he's absolutely going living and assaulting Jorro before that match even begins. Christ. You want to talk about unhinged messes? You want to talk about unhinged monsters? It gets no more unhinged. It gets no more deadly than Nekamaru Nidai. The embodiment of despair, Nekamaru Nidai, who has basically been at the top of the damn food chain here at Millennium since he won the belt back at the rebound. And tonight, he's putting in good work tonight, beating the living daylights out of Jorro Kujo. God damn it. You want to talk about people who have been absolutely unhinged and dominant since they came onto the scene here in Millennium. It gets no more unhinged and no more deadly and no more dominant than Nakamaru Nidai. He's put on an absolute tear, destroying, decimating, and absolutely defeating everyone in his way. And tonight he's looking to make the statement absolutely clear on Joro Kujo tonight, given what he's already done thus far in this contest. But of course Joro trying to survive, trying to give Juvenile Delinquency more momentum going into next week. Well, Nekamaru Nidai is just looking to deliver pain to Joro Kujo tonight. And now Joro, oh God! Viciously assaulting one half of the Tag Team Champions. One half of the Tag Team Champions in Jorro Kujo tonight in this main event match. And this vicious assault, this vicious assault that you could realistically call a match, because let's be honest, even if it's labeled as a match, Nekamaru Nidai is basically just out here tonight to deliver one vicious assault to Jorro Kujo tonight. And an Irish whip, oh god! Joro Kujo, who basically took advantage of the ring ropes earlier, is now trying to utilize that to break down Nidai tonight. An Irish whip right to the corner. 
And now, need I take it full advantage of that? Taking full advantage of that exposed turnbuckle that Joe exposed earlier on the match. And he's utilizing that to his advantage here tonight. But as I say before, ladies and gentlemen, Nekomaru Nidai has been on an absolute tear since becoming Millennium Champion. Ever since he became Millennium Champion back a few months ago, he's been on an absolute tear through the division. He's been on an absolute tear through, uh, through Millennium's roster, decimating everyone in his way, and as of recently, being the representative as a team leader of Team ACL back at Heroes Paradise. But he's come very close to losing the belt at multiple opportunities. He was close to losing it against Squall back at Danger Zone. He was close to losing it twice in a row against Bruno Kimura back at the third anniversary show and at the subsequent millennium. And he's also been damn well close to losing it against Vamp back last month at Maximum. Back earlier, actually back last month at Maximum Impact. So you have to imagine, you have to imagine that this man is going to do whatever it takes to make damn well sure that he walks out. And he walks out tonight with the win and walks out a part of victory with the belt. And no, Jotaro, Jotaro was trying to utilize that to his advantage, but Nekomaru Nidai ain't having none of that. Our Millennium Champion is definitely not having any of that. But wait a minute, Shortero picking him up for that deadlift, deadlift back suplex. And now Shortero pummeling right into Nekomaru Nidai's head, right to the head of our Millennium Champion. Of course, Nidai ain't having none of that, ladies and gentlemen. And just throwing him. Right into that corner again, busting open Jotaro Kujo already. But Jotaro not allowing that for one second, not allowing that advantage, and a neck breaker by our by one half of the tag team champions. And not even a one count. Not even a one count. Are you serious? Are you serious right now? Not even a one count. What is this? Now Jotaro just trying to take the advantage as much as he can. Nidai unfortunately trying to beat the living but Jesus out of one half of the tag team champions at this point. Now Nidai just taking full advantage of that exposed turnbuckle. Jotaro already bloodied up as it is. He's looking to just absolutely decimate him here tonight. I mean, what else can you realistically say in this sort of contest? Nidai has, is basically doing what he's been doing for the past few months, and that's decimate, destroy, and eliminate everyone in his way. Irish whip to the outside, now punch. And wait a minute. Oh god, vicious DDT. A vicious DDT right off those ropes. Now picking up, picking up Jotaro now, but wait a bit, no, Jotaro, not allowing that for one second, and a twisting neck breaker right there by Jotaro Kujo, and now he's just pacing, trying to keep himself alive in this match for as much as he possibly can, and no, a neck breaker denied, neck breaker denied right there to Jotaro. But need I not allowing that one bit, not allowing the momentum to go into his favor and setting it up for a package pile driver connecting. And the already bloodied up, and the already bloody up skull of Joro Kujo is only getting much, much worse in this contest. But yet Joro still fighting back, still fighting back after everything. Oh God, and the neck, and the Russian leg sweep connecting. Now, Irish whipping him once again into that exposed steel. The exposed. Actually, wait a minute. Before I go off to those ropes, said. Using just the rebounding gravity to his advantage. And oh god, no. Jawbreaker connecting there right onto Nidai. And Jordan 
with an eye raking. No, need I ain't. Need I ain't taken too much, kindly too much to that at all. And now once again, just shoving him right into that exposed turnbuckle once again. And now wait a minute, Jotaro with a DDT. Straight up, just a lack of effort DDT, but it's still effective nonetheless. And now wait a minute. Once again, gonna go for that deadlift backside suplex connecting. Picking him up again. And my god, what enough could we realistically see? And a backbreaker right to the knee. Backbreaker right onto the knee. And now, oh god, super kick. Super kick right to the outside. And continuing with those punches and the kicks and the absolute flurry of strikes right there by Needai. And another super kick. Another damn super kick right there by Needai. And Needai just eyeing down at Jotaro, but Jotaro not allowing that. Belly to belly right to the outside as a reversal is made. But Jotaro can't seem to get the advantage made into his favor. And the ref is down. Needai knocking the ref down. And god damn it, no! Come on! Come on, Nina! God damn it! You don't have to do this, god damn it, Ong! Well, the, the ref is back up in the neck of time. Ref back up in the neck of time and a clothesline right to the outside. And you know for a damn fact that the ref stayed down, that Joro, that Joro would have been in absolute danger at that point. But I think he's already in danger again, being set up for a second package power driver again. Picking up Jotaro one more time. But no, Jotaro still fighting back. Still fighting back, picking him up and wait a minute. No, backside reversal right there by Nidai. And this vicious assault brought to you by the ultimate, by the embodiment of despair. And for all intents and purposes, the last remaining member of Ultimate Despair at this point. And need I eye down Jotaro? God, no! This could be the end for Jotaro in this match! This could be it! Buckle bomb onto the exposed turn buckle! That vicious move that has ended many matches before it, and it could put Jotaro down right here, right now! One, two, three! And Nakamaru Nidai walks out tonight with the win, walking into Pop to victory, into his defense of the Millennium Championship with that win. And you have to imagine that Nidai is feeling good going into Pop to victory at this point. And you have to feel worried for Rock Howard at this point. You have to be worried. For Rock Howard, considering what he's gonna have to go up against and pop to victory. I mean, Nakamura Nidai making the statement clear tonight that there is no escape for Rock Howard should he walk into pop to victory. He will decimate him at no. Wait a minute, what? What the hell is Nidai doing now? Oh god. Oh god. He's grabbing that steel chair. He's grabbing. That steel chair now. And wait a minute. Come on. God damn it. No. Come on. Come on, Nila. You won that damn match. You won that damn match tonight. You don't need to do this. And wait a minute. No. Come on. Come on. Setting him up. Putting him up top for a power bomb. Another goddamn power bomb onto the outside. This vicious assault by this monstrous man that we call our Millennium Champion. Disgusting display by our Millennium Champion. God damn it all. Is this really what, how we're going to end it off tonight going into Pop to Victory? Wait. Wait. He's here. He's here tonight. The number one contender for the Millennium Championship is here. Rock Howard is here tonight and he has had enough! He's had enough of what he's seen last weekend tonight! And he's making a damn beeline for the ring! And you know for a damn fact he's going right after Nakamura Nidai! 
And this, this has been a huge build up for the number one contender. He's had enough and he's just letting loose Royal Tom Millennium Champion. He's not a, no, our Millennium Champion. Our Millennium Champion is not going down for a fight. But Rock Howard has just had enough and he's looking to get, and he's looking to deliver it right through to Nekamaru Nidai tonight. But Nidai, Nidai must have saw this coming because he's been ready for him. But Rock Howard, Rock Howard, Marco Wolves! And you have to imagine that if he can hit that path to victory, it will be game, set, match, and we will have a new Millennium Champion. And you have to imagine that Rock Howard has to be feeling good about this. And Rock Howard, oh god no! Need I taking advantage of the situation? No! And Need I taunting away at the number one contender. Knowing damn well that he's still not 100% after the beatdown he gave him two weeks ago. And he's looking to soften him up even more going into next week. God damn it all, we all thought that Rock Howard was going to come here tonight and deliver one hell of a beating going into next week. But it seems like more than ever, we have reason to fear going into next week. Can't even Rock Howard beat Nekamaru Nidai? Or will the embodiment of despair truly be too much for the Hungry Wolf? We'll find out next week.